Lung Pao Pu tells a story when he was a young novice staying with John Sao. He'd be reading books by John Singh, who talked about establishing mindfulness. So he asked John Sao, why doesn't John Sao talk about establishing mindfulness? And John Sao said, well, I tell you to use the word Bhutto to focus on the breath. That's how you establish it. You make up your mind, you're going to stay someplace, and you really stick with it. As the Buddha said, all of the foundations of mindfulness, all of the frames of reference, revolve around the breath. When you focus here, you've got the feelings of pleasure or displeasure that come with the breath. You've got the mind aware. And you've got all these mental qualities. Some of them are skillful, some of them are unskillful, and they're all right here. But the breath is what keeps you in the present moment, so you can watch what's happening while it's happening. I can do something about it. In other words, mindfulness is not a passive process. It's more active. You move in on one place, stay there. And then from there you can see clearly what's coming up in the mind. Then you can do something about it. That's your protection. If you're not watching right here, who's watching right here? Who's going to be able to make a difference? Who's going to be able to protect you from unskillful thoughts coming up? It's not the case that somebody else can move in and do that for you. You've got to remember. By staying with the breath, you come to associate all kinds of good qualities with the breath. Mindfulness, alertness, ardency, concentration, discernment. So when something suddenly happens, you go right to the breath, and right there at the breath are all the good qualities that you would think you're practicing. And that's your protection. As you go out into the world and come back, remember, you're the one who has to protect yourself. The teachings are there to provide the protection, but they provide the protection only to the extent that you remember them and put them into practice. And when you go out, remember, you're going with a purpose. And John Munn would wander in the forest, and he didn't go simply in line with where he felt like going. He had a sense that there was something he had to do, had something he had to help, someone he had to help. And so he would go there. He would go with a purpose in mind. And the purpose always was in line with the Dharma. When you're acting on purposes like that, then it's a lot easier for other good Dharma qualities to come in. When you forget your purpose and you're just out wandering around for the fun of it, then the Dharma gets left behind. So remember your purpose. This is the Atta that should go with the Dhamma, A-T-T-H-A. Remember the Buddha as he went through that forest, picked up a handful of leaves and said, which is greater, the leaves in his hand or the leaves in the forest? The monks, of course, said the, hand, the leaves in the forest were much greater. He said in the same way the things that he came to know in his awakening were like the leaves in the forest. Things he taught were the handful of leaves. Why did he teach them? Because they led to the goal. The teachings are there for a purpose. They're not just there in the books for people to admire. They're for you to put in to practice in your mind, wherever you go. So always keep that purpose in mind, and everything else will fall into place.